Good afternoon, 3B students. Um, I hope you're doing well. Once again, we reach another week um, and another lesson. Um, so this week we'll be learning about some reading analysis skills and about Asian immigration um, to kick off May, which is um, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in the US. So exciting, we'll be doing some activities um, and readings about that. These are your objectives. So by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to, you'll have some new vocab related to the theme of immigration. Um, and if you don't know what immigration is, we will go over that on the next slide. Um, you'll understand um, what a paragraph does and the different parts of a paragraph, the purpose of it. Um, you'll be able, you'll learn and be able to use some text analysis skills, so some reading skills, so that you can understand the main idea of a paragraph um, in an article. And you'll be able to, after our Zoom session, um, talk about some reasons why Asians immigrated to the US. So first, what is immigration? What does it make you think of? Do you, have you heard of the word immigration before? So immigration is the act of moving to another country to live and stay there, usually for forever or permanently. What does immigration make you think of? Think of that question as we go through some of the vocab and hopefully we'll be able to talk about um, immigration and your thoughts about it. So these are just some, some vocab terms that I want to, to introduce you guys to. So emigrate is different from immigrate. So emigrate is a verb, it means to leave, to come from your origin country, which is your home country. Uh, and immigrate, i, i, is to move to another country. So here we see we emigrate. If we're from Australia, we emigrate, emigrate from Australia, and we immigrate to the US. So we always immigrate to, it's the place that we go to. Emigrate is the place that we come from, right? And there we can settle. If you immigrate somewhere, you settle, which means is you, you arrive there and you stay there permanently, right? To migrate, so no E or I in, in front of um, migrate, is just to move somewhere temporarily or for only a certain amount of time, not forever or permanently. Manual labor is physical work that is done by people with like hands and bodies, so not really with machines, right? So agriculture and mining are both forms of manual labor. Nowadays, agriculture and mining do use machines, but a lot of people still do manual labor, it's their own work with their bodies um, that is the most important. So you see here we see agriculture, which is working on like a farm to harvest crops, and mining, which is we use like a pickaxe to mine, right, underground. And then also working on railroads, which are like track systems for trains, is also an example of manual labor. Um, so work can have harsh conditions. Condition is, is a noun, can be plural or singular. It means the factors like weather, the danger, the time, um, all the different parts, the aspects um, of work that affect how a person works. Um, so if it's harsh conditions, that means they're really hard conditions. The weather is really bad or it's really hot. Um, it's very dangerous. Um, it's a lot of people, very close quarters, yeah. Workers can have a hard time, but they can persevere, which means to get through the hard time and stay strong. Persevere is a verb. An act is a law passed by a government. So example, the tax, the, the Tea Act was an act that was passed by Britain for the US and it allowed um, British people to bring their tea directly to American colonies and to sell their tea there. So an act is just a law that's passed. Legislation is an uncountable noun. It's just, it means the law or laws passed by a government. So US legislation is law or laws passed by the US. And out, to outlaw, which is a verb, is to make something illegal or not allowed. So if something, if you outlaw something, it's not allowed. And outlaw, a noun, is a criminal or someone who breaks the law and is hiding from the authorities. A quota is a limit on the number of people that can do something, like immigrate to another country, go to a university, work in a certain job. So it's a limit. We don't allow 
a certain number. We only allow a certain number of people to do something, right? So this is an example, it just shows an example of a quota, like this is a group of people, a diverse group of people. The quota is only men who are above 50. So we only let a limited number of people through, right? So that's a quota. To annex is to add land or territory so you can control it. So in this example, we see this Lucid Motors, which is a company. The annexation area is the area that they want to add to their land or territory. Colonization is when people go to a foreign country and settle there and take control of it. So we saw in the history of the world, like Britain and the European countries, they colonized the colonization of Africa. So they went to Africa and went to those country the to Africa and those lands and they took control of it, right? Occupation is similar to colonization, but usually it's more temporary. And it's when a group of people or an army move into a place or territory to control it. And then independence, when a country has independence, it has its own government and is not ruled by another country. So like Cambodia got its independence in 1953 from France, right? A wave <laughs> um, is a large number of people who move somewhere at a specific point in time. So a wave, I also put this picture um, of a wave, like an ocean wave, because that's what an ocean, a wave is. But it's also, if, there's a, if you have a wave of people that move at a certain time, um, that's called a wave. So here we see that in the US there were waves of immigrants, so a wave of Cuban immigrants, Mexican immigrants, um, Italian immigrants, Russian. So a wave um, of immigration means a group of people who move at, the, at, the, at, the, at a certain time. A war, maybe you guys know what a war is, but it's a fight between two countries, governments and societies or groups, and it's usually violent. And then a depression is a time when there is very little economic activity causing unemployment or poverty, right? So the Great Depression of 1929 um, happened in the US, but also around the world, and a lot of people became poor and weren't working. Okay, so now that we went over the vocabulary for immigration, uh, we're gonna now talk, learn some reading skills and talk about paragraphs specifically. So what is a paragraph? You guys have heard about what paragraphs are before. We learned about formal written, formal and informal written communication. So you know about what a paragraph is, but it's a group of sentences that are written together to form one main idea or topic, right? And so the main idea of the paragraph uh, supports the bigger main idea of like an article, an essay, a book that contains many paragraphs, right? So what is a main idea? A main idea is the general point of a sentence, paragraph, essay, chapter, or book that an author wants someone to know when reading it. So what is like the most important thing um, that the author wants someone to know, right? And details, what are details? Details are more specific information that an author uses to support the main idea, right? So here's an example you can see, usually with, the, with a paragraph, the topic sentence Sometimes it states the main idea of the paragraphs, the general point. The supporting sentences, they support the topic sentence, they explain the main idea, they give details relating to the main idea. And the closing sentence is kind of like the conclusion, it restates or sums up the main idea, right? So an example of a paragraph that follows that structure is this paragraph about piranhas. So although most people think that piranhas are dangerous, they for the most part do not hurt humans. Piranhas do not usually eat large animals. They eat smaller fish and aquatic plants. When they are in contact with humans, piranhas always leave quickly and they don't attack. Their fear of humans makes sense. More piranhas are eaten by people than people are eaten by piranhas. If the fish are well fed, they won't bite humans. So this is like a simple paragraph, but let's look at what is the main idea, details, and conclusion. If we look at the structure of it. Well, if we go back to this structure that we see here, we can get an idea of what the different parts of the, the paragraph are. So the main idea is that although most people think that piranhas are dangerous, they for the most part don't hurt humans, right? So that's like the main idea. We see that in the topic sentence, right? Some details that the author uses to support that are piranhas, they don't usually eat large animals, they eat smaller fish. So that's one reason that they don't hurt humans. When they are in contact with humans, piranhas always leave. They don't attack, so they might get scared of humans. 
another example that they're not dangerous to humans. Their fear of humans makes sense. More piranhas are eaten by people than people are eaten by piranhas, right? So that's another detail. And then the conclusion is that if the fish are well fed, they won't bite humans, right? So as long as they can feed, they have enough food to eat, um, they won't hurt humans, they won't bite them, right? So that's an example of a paragraph that follows a pretty ex normal structure, right? But it's important to have some skills for finding the main idea of a paragraph because the main idea might not always be the topic sentence or the first sentence. You might have to look for it. It might be the last sentence, it might be in the middle, or it might be um, a combination of different ideas in the paragraph. And so you have to be able to read the paragraph and understand what the main idea is by getting what the overall meaning or what the author wants you to know, right? So these are some tips that I have for you for finding the main idea. So when you read the paragraph, ask yourself these questions. Who is the text about? Like what person or people is the text about or the paragraph? What? Is the text about what topic or idea? Like what's happening to the person or people? What is generally going on, right? You can also ask yourself these questions, like where does the text talk about a place or a setting? Does the text talk about a specific time in the past, present or future? Is there a reason or explanation for what happens in the text? And then the second question, but I will just add that where, when, and why, these are not the most important. The most important to ask yourself are who and what. Right? Those are the most important questions to ask yourself. And then ask, what is the most important information about the who and the what? Like, what does the author want me to know or want us to know about the person or people and the, the general topic or idea? What is the most important, right? And then when you answer that question, it's important to restate the main idea of the paragraph in your own words. So in your own words means you don't copy the text or the copy words or the sentence from the paragraph, but you, you use your own words and ideas um, to restate the main idea of the paragraph, right? So we can, this is, we can practice with this paragraph. So let's read this together and then we'll practice finding the main idea. So starting in the 1850s, young single men from Southern China were the first Asian immigrants to come to the United States to play an important role in the development of the country. Working as miners, railroad builders, farmers, factory workers, and fishermen, the Chinese were 20% of California's labor force by 1870, even though they were only 0.002% of the entire United States population. During the Depression of 1876, many people cried that the Chinese were taking away our jobs, and anti-Chinese legislation and violence spread throughout the West Coast. Okay. So let's try to answer the questions, try to find the main idea, right? So who and what is the paragraph about? Let me think about that for a second. You can pause the video if you'd like. Who, it's about immigrants from Southern China, right? That's what the paragraph is about, right? And then what is the paragraph about? Like, what about them? What, what about the immigrants, right? Well, it's about their immigration experiences in the US, right? So what is the most important information about the who and what, so about the immigrants and about their experiences, right? So what's the most important? Chinese immigrants gave a lot of manual labor, right? They worked really hard, but they faced violence and racism. So that's the most important information that we get about the Chinese immigrants and the topic. So now we just, now we know this, we just wanna restate the main idea of the paragraph in our own words, right? So we don't copy the tech, the paragraph, right? We say it in our own words. So here we can say, even though Chinese immigrants helped the U.S. develop, they experienced racism and exclusion. So they helped the U.S., they were very nice and kind, hardworking, but then they weren't really appreciated for their work, right? They were, they, they experienced racism, exclusion, violence, etc. So that's the most important. The author wants us to know that, um, you know, that, that issue, right? So now, before our Zoom session, I want you all to try, I want you to try your best. Don't worry if it's hard, right? We're gonna go over, go over all of this in our Zoom session, okay? But before Zoom, I want you to read the article on the next two slides about Asian immigration to the US. So it has, there's six paragraphs total, right? I want you to try to find the main idea of each paragraph and write it down in your own words. So like what we just did with the first paragraph, right? And I also want you to try to think about the paragraphs together and what the main idea of the whole article is, right? 
So this might seem really hard and scary for you, but I just want you to try your best. I know the reading might be hard, but try to study some of the vocab before. I would recommend reading each paragraph first. Don't look up any words or anything. Try to understand like what the main idea is of each paragraph. If you read it the second time, you can look up words if you'd like. And then try to just go through this process of the who, ask yourself who and what is the paragraph about, what's the most important information, and then restate the paragraph or the main, main idea in your own words, right? So I want you to try to do that for the paragraphs in this article right here. So it's this article. And if you struggle, if you have trouble, don't worry, we'll go over everything in our Zoom session, okay? So we'll practice, I'll explain things, don't worry, okay? And make sure you study the vocab too, so that cause those show up. I bolded the vocab words here so you can see them. And that's about it. So please let me know if you have any questions about that. And I look forward to seeing you at our Zoom session on Tuesday afternoon. Um, please take notes, ask any questions, um, and please stay healthy and safe. We miss you very much, and I um, hope that your lockdown is still going well, okay? All right, bye-bye.